gonna get into this because this is a transformation thing. It couldn't come at a better time because right now it's like February. Everyone had those New Year's resolutions or whatever their dream is right now. February is like a shit month of the year. It's kind of cold everywhere. Um, it's kind of like a very slow, stagnant part of the season. There's not much holidays or celebrations. It's kind of like it's a very, very slow pulse of life period that we're in right now. And a lot of people are just kind of like wondering what the fuck, right? It's fine, hard to find that that uh, intrinsic motivation to keep to keep the fight alive. When I started uh, way back when, when I started Ranger School, man, I went into that program the best shape of my life. If you go straight through it, 70 days, 70 days. That's gonna take a little bit of everything you got, physically, but mo mostly mentally. You're going into that endeavor, and why do you go into it? Because the ideology of being an elite, being a ranger, is something that really makes you feel proud if you can be part of that, that core group, man. So that's the reason you want to change, right? That's the reason probably you're looking at where you currently are and why you want to go into this transformation because where you currently are is something that is no longer acceptable to your terms. You want, you want more of life. You've been watching some motivational things, maybe, you know, seeing some, some of the stuff I, I, I've said and somehow it's hits you in a way that, yeah, Dude, I want to get there too. I want to do this too. I want more out of my life. I want to make something in my life, right? So that's the ideology that starts the process. Yeah, I want to be a ranger, so therefore I'm going to enter that. That cannot be all it's about. You have to have a, an overwhelming force of a want, a need, a belief inside yourself that you believe in this. And once that happens, combine with the ideology of where you can be the end state goal, once that is solidified, then you move forward with ever, without ever looking back. When you're moving forward, you're moving to where that greater good is. That person that you want to be, you must already be up here. You must believe it before you embark on that journey. If you don't, what will happen is the old you, the one you're trying to change from, the old subliminal thought processes will arise and start to take over you as the wear and tear begins, as the struggle starts to build up, as the task at hand becomes overwhelming, as the days become weeks and months with still no resolve yet, still going through the work in progress, as that continues to happen, you must have something greater that overrides all that despair to make it through. How do you do that? You shoulder the weakness. Sideline that motherfucker. You go into the endeavor, right? Just when I went into it, I knew what I was going into. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. I knew I wanted to be that person at the end of the race, stand strong. I knew that, that those 70 days of sacrifice will be paid tenfold the rest of my life and other endeavors. When I involved in something hard in my life, and I'm wondering if I had the intestinal fortitude to get through it. I can go back in time when I was in ranger school. And motherfucker, I made it then. I can do it now. It's a different theater of life, but the same fundamental principles of dedication, sacrifice, work ethic, due diligence to oversee the current situation for the betterment of where it's going to go will still continue the journey for me. I go into the endeavor knowing I am going to see the hardships and the headaches along the way. I welcome that. They don't surprise me. I expect them. That's a huge different terminology. Ideology going into an endeavor. I'm in the ranger school. I, I grabbed my bags in the apartment I was living in in Columbus, Georgia. I came through the gate at, at 1.15 or 2 in the morning. As soon as I came through the gate, I got decked from behind by one of the RIs, ranger instructors, on my face in the mud. This motherfucker was calling me names and stuff. I must have done a thousand push-ups before I was even five yards into the in, in, into the compound. We started like 450 some people. By the time, time the sun came up, 160 were left. Why is that? Why did they quit so fast? Because the ideology of being a ranger is all they had. That was their driving force. That ideology is just words and thought process. It's not, it's not strong enough to combat all the wear and tear it's going to take to transform that person into being that elite person. They went into the arena hoping this, they, they wanted that title. They didn't understand the framework of what that title meant. 
you understand what it means, you understand how valuable it is. How it's desirable. Anything that's desired, it's everything you have. So you accept that. When I went to ranger school, I said, yo, 70 days, I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner to this situation. I'm going through a sentence that when I get through, I will be that person I want to be. But until I get through that, I'm not going to think about the comforts of life. What it's like to actually have sheets and a pillow. What it's like to have food cooked that's warm. What it's like to actually sleep. To have nutrition in your body. To have take a shower. To be able to sit on a toilet and after you finish taking a dump, wiping your ass. Those little luxuries in life were no longer present in the situation. For me to think about them would only cause the demise and a weakness for the journey I'm in. I had to separate myself from them. I could not compare where I was to where I once was. I had to look forward saying, hey, I'm willing to sacrifice today for tomorrow's betterment. Knowing that going into it, when I hit all these adversities and all these walls, they weren't shocking to me. They were expected. And when they hit me, I welcomed them. Because I knew by going through them, it would change me to that person I wanted to be. Not the ideology of the person, but the materialistical value. The, 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 the values internally, the, 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 um, the, the, uh, the blueprints of success there. I knew that these were all the workings. The ingredients of life for success, they were all little lessons that once mastered would be the, the, the lines that formulates the picture of the person I wanted to be. I had to go through them. I didn't want someone to give me something. I wanted to earn the motherfucker. So going into that, that arena, that endeavor, expecting that set me up for success big difference there. If all I'm doing is hoping to get the goal, the journey will be impossible. You have to understand the goal, the value of the goal, why that is so special. Stop running from the potential of what you can be, guys. It's inside of you. It's always been there. Grab a buddy of yours. Say, man, me and you are going to fucking do this together. And you're going to be on my ass if I start slacking. I'm going to be on your ass if I start slacking. And I'll never accept mediocre again. I'm always going to give it my 110 fucking percent. That's the only thing I can ever say a solid day's work. That's all that I will ever find peace in. If you guys do not do that, I promise you, your life will haunt you for the rest of your days. If there's potential inside of you, which you know it's there, but you're too scared to tell anyone else about it, and you go on and on, get older and older and older and older, and the winter's not turning up to close, and you knew it could have been given birth to, but you never did it, I promise you, it will haunt you. It'll be more, it's a living nightmare, dude. That fact that you have the ability to do something, and you're too weak to fucking turn the key and start the engine on it, is a greater disappointment and a greater burden to carry than any of this physical sweat equity or pain in the gym or, or, or sacrifice. All that is just nothing compared to a life where you're burdened by regret, guys.
do that shit every day. On every rep. Whether it's in the gym, or studying for your test, you put that kind of effort into any endeavor in life. It's gonna bear the fruits of your labor. You cannot lose. And if it doesn't go your way because it's the subjective nature of some endeavor you're going for, you're giving your all. There's no more you can do. It makes you proud. Be an example of society. It's just, that's the only way to live, man. Everything else is second to none. That's the only fucking way. fuck is your life? Are you happy with it? And if so, is just the intake and outtake of breath that makes you smile on your face? That's something your fucking mother gave you. You haven't earned that. What have you done with your life to make it something else besides the normality of everybody else? The intake and the outtake of what you call life is nothing more than time. And unless done something with, it's forgotten about. There's no footprint of your existence left for anyone else to follow. Life is time. In a life that's remembered, where a footprint is followed behind in footsteps of inspiration and motivation, is when time is met with opportunity and action. They collide to be a life of remembrance. The problem is, most people don't have a plan. And without a plan of your own life, you become the plan of someone else's life. You're not running the day, the day's running you. The differential between those people is belief. One person with belief overrides a hundred people with just intent. Intent is thought process, thinking, wargaming it, never putting a foot forward, never putting their, their face or their name to the fire. Belief is going after it, figuring it out along the way. This workout is gonna bring that belief back in your life. It's a back workout. And after this workout, not only will you have a stronger back, you have belief and confidence put into action. Life. No longer is your life filled with stop signs and yield signs and halts and this shit and, and fucking unauthorized motherfucking signs. Life begins now. If it doesn't begin now, your life is fucking over. When you push yourself that hard, you sleep easy at night. And it's not because you're physically tired. It's not because physically you're worn out and you sleep easy. It's that by going the physical exhaustion, your brain can finally rest, knowing you give it your all. So when you physically push yourself, that hard, you sleep easy, because your mind's at rest. And you did everything you could to be a champion that day. That's the difference. That's what gives you the strength to get off the ground and do it again. Fear is a differential between you know, dreams and demons. You gotta like, cross that threshold of a, a fear mill, you know? Fear's the juice that either make you or break you. And the more times you do this shit, 
prove it to yourself and prove it to yourself, the fear factor gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So therefore what you're doing is monumental difference. Meaning like if you come in here and you give it 60% max effort and you go through a couple months of training at 60% for two months let's say, or you come in here for a week at 110% effort, you have greater results in that one week than you did when the two months at 60%. It's your time, guys. Why not own every second of it and turn it into something? You do that, man, and you're second to none. You should be very proud of yourself right now. You know? You came in here with a desire. You put action to that desire. That combination explodes and the potential, whatever you want to make happen. This world is your playground, man, if you want to be. Everything that you ever dreamed of becoming, some, some human made it happen. The only difference between that human and you, we all have all created equally, right? Except up here. We have the ability to enhance or to destroy this guy. And that will have a cause and effect if this is enhanced or destroyed. Right here, guys. That's why I always say the gym is a mind-body connection. It's not about just the gym and getting big. It's a metaphor of life. You come in here, you build your body, and it's not subjective nature. You build a confidence that, in your opinion, what you feel is stronger than anything else. Like I said before, winners, their belief overrides the disbelief of the crowd every single time. So no matter what happens, they believe in themselves when no one else is out there. That's going to be the make or break. That's going to be the, you know, the details of success. That's going to be the cause combined to the effect. That's the life you want to live. That's the life you can live. That's the life you better start living. You know, excuses. Fear, they're all created by the individual. There's a solution to it all. There's confidence to combat any kind of fear you have. But you gotta be willing to fail in order to succeed. You gotta, be able to take that winnable gamble because you believe in yourself. Comes down with the belief upstairs. You know, they always say mind never matter. And that's so true. But if you don't give a shit about it, meaning you don't mind. Well then it doesn't matter to you. So who gives a fuck what the outcome is? You know? That giant oak in the forest was nothing more than a seed at one point. It's just the growth of something. And it starts that seed is inside. The belief in what you how you see yourself in the mirror, how you see where you can go, the perception of the truth being more valuable than what the underlying truth is itself. But what everyone else says is the truth. How you see it, it's more powerful. And that belief is perishable. Every day you gotta build that. You build it by going here, pushing failure and beyond. You're like, God damn, man. I didn't know I could do that. I just did it and I'm exhausted, but I feel pride. I feel like I did something today. That right there adds up to be that oak in the forest. That stands the test of time. That's the, the right I just hold than anyone else. You know, it sounds it sounds like you know metaphors, whatever else. <laughs> well, it's the truth, man. It's the truth. You gotta rock yourself before you rock somebody else. Check it out. Every single day, when you come to the gym, or any endeavor you do, like I said, pick up all the shit, you pick it all up, put your name to it, you need something, you hold your truth to whatever you're doing, carry your words to actions, you come to the gym that day, you give it everything you have, you leave everything, the sweat, the tears, everything you have, in the gym. When you leave all that fear and all that bullshit, when you leave the gym, you leave a stronger person. That's one day. Consecutive days of that makes a good fucking year. A year that this time next year, people are gonna be blown away. Blown away. How the hell did you do this? I don't even recognize you. That kind of role model power, inspiring other people to do it. It doesn't happen. And a year from now, you go, yeah, I wanna be this person. That person is a day away from you. It's about committing today and making today yours. It's 
consecutively, day after day after day after day, hating your fucking dudes, creates every dream a reality. This is right here. This gym is a fucking metaphor for the subjective, subjective nature of the world up there. Where you can battle all that. So here, the weight doesn't change weight on you randomly. You build a confidence and you can overcome shit here. Because out there in the real world, your best friends will stab you in the back. Your family will turn on you. Guaranteed deals will falter. There'll be up riches and the next that, that night poor as can be. How do you stay true to all that? Ride the storms. Life is not about waiting for a storm to pass, guys. It's about learning how to dance in the fucking rain. Day by day. Let's dance, motherfuckers. How can you not love this, guys? I mean, it's Austin Shore, but how can you not love it? I mean, where else in life can you put work into some endeavor every single day and get a reward for it? It's like going to the bank and giving them a dollar, come back the next day, even later that day, getting a dollar and a quarter. It's like, it doesn't work that way in life always. And here we own the ins and the outs, man. Now it's subjective. The harder you work, the more you get. But there you are in here to yourself and honest, the greater the return on investment. It's so pure. When you're in here, man, everything else out there doesn't always go your way. You give it your all in here. Not only do you create the body that can withstand the test of time out there, but you create the invincible will. Starting your day in the morning, have a positive feeling about your day, going out to the business world, the subjective side of the world, and you've already paid your fucking dues, feeling alive, everyone's just getting up and stuff. Invincibility, guys. You repeat that every single day. No one's catching you, man. Separate between you and second place is forever. They're never gonna close that gap. But then again, the little things you do every single day that you choose to do could be the demise of you. All those little tiny hiccups, the little bit of bad form, all those little things that what adds up to be failure or success. You get to create each one every single day. You get to say, okay, yes, that's good, I'll do that. Whether it's good or bad. That's on you, on your shoulders. I love it, man. Fucking rock and roll. That's making the most of the set, man. Making the most of the seconds and minutes, the hours and days of your lives, man. That's the heart of a champion right there. They never say it's the bicep of a champion. The ego of a champion. It's always the heart of a champion that matters. Because at the test of time, one of the most strenuous adversities of life, it's the heart and the headstrong ability to keep the pulse going of belief when the body is shut down physically. Mentally, you survive and push through it. The heart of a champion. Not the fucking ego, not the goddamn bicep. The heart. And what drives the heart and the beat of it. What you got upstairs that makes or breaks every success in life.
Apex Gym is empty right now. It's not because it's hot out, it's summertime, and it's fucking like 90 some degrees in here. No, that's not the reason why. It's because they've already quit mentally. They quit before they got the weather report. The weather report just encouraged them to stay quitted. If that's even a word. People quit, guys, because their focus is off. Mental focus is off. Meaning they've started a journey, right? And all they focus on is how far they have to still go. Instead of looking at how far they've already come. If you look at how far you gotta go, it's like, oh my god, another mile? But then you look back and say, like, fuck, I've already gone 18 miles? Another mile, no problem. But if you never focus on the past and realize all those things that you've overcome to get where you are, the distance ahead always seems like a forever journey. It's the reality of mental perception that dictates the physical attributes of action. If you don't believe it, this body can't do it. If you believe it, this body is unlimited potential of what it can do. We've seen throughout history, the Olympics right now, the average man trained, pushed beyond his capabilities to something that no one's ever thought possible. And he's standing there as a testament that yes, it can be done. And yes, you can do it too. Have you stopped getting everything confused inside? Allowing all these excuses to come in saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can do it. Why would you ever say you can't until you go out there and try it? 